Of course, their finishing order, Lowndes and Seaton off the front row. Bright and Radisic, that was a terrific drive from 13th to 4th. Some hard going with some fast competitors inside that top 10. Crompton, Longhurst, Richards and Scape are the top eight, the first four rows. Dick Johnson and Russell Engel out of row five. Cameron McLean, very fast privateer with Paul Romano alongside in row six. John Faulkner and Mark Larkham out of seven. Steve Reed and Larry Perkins will start out of eight. Engel from 30th to 10th, that was an outstanding effort. Donoher, McDougall, Nash, Nathan Pretty, Mark Noski, who had a, an altercation with Greg Murphy, we found out, and Jason Barguana with some problems too, possibly due to that contact with John Bow. Alan Heath and Danny Miller out of 13. Greg Murphy, boy, he got in the wars today. He's back out of 27. Jeff Kendrick alongside Garth Tander, another of the locals, caught up in that accident with Larry Perkins. And Brett Peters alongside in the colour scan forward. Big field of V8s here for the final. And word just through, Mark, that Brett Peters, who is, of course, standing in for Danny Osborne in the colour scan forward, is out of this one. On board with Scaife, there he is, getting himself set. The third and final 20-lapper. There's Glenn Seaton. Gee, uh, a big improvement from the AUXR8 this weekend, guys. Oh, yeah. it's, it's good. And it, the great thing about it is, if you look at the latter stage of the race, that's when Seaton's thing really comes into his own. Dick Johnson, who is suffering again from sinus problems. He's yeah. a little bit frustrated with that. We're getting ready. Green at the back. Here we go. Last race of the day. Last race for round three. Lowndes will need to get away to a good one here. Seaton will be hungry for a win. In WA, away we go. Seaton gets a little up off the line. Looks like a fairly even run. He's got it. Great start. Glenn Seaton will lead him into the first turn. Then there's no, no, contact. No, no, no. Look, Dick Johnson. He's oh. turned sideways. Oh, oh no. No God. idea who hit him. They all try and dodge him the best they oh, can. Oh, they did too. Talk about threading the needle. Boy, oh boy, Dick Johnson's last appearance in WA. And that's not the way he wanted to get off. Darcy Russell in trouble there too. But Dick was very, very lucky not to get hit. But look at that start by Glenn Seaton. You can see how well the car launched off the line. I was very surprised he had managed to get in front of Lowndes. Well, do you know, he and Neil Crompton spent a full day at Calder Park recently practicing their starts. It has obviously paid off. Oh, Dick Johnson in all sorts of trouble. He's going to put that one away for the day, I'd say. That's a real shame. It's a bad way to tail out his career. But Glenn Seaton now feeling the heat from Craig Lowndes. The dominant force at Barbagallo Raceway this weekend, but Seaton's done it for Ford fans. Are cheering on pit straight as he's got Craig Lowndes right up behind him. Great start in the FTR XRA. I think if Seaton can hold off Lowndes, he, oh, it's getting close. If he can hold him off for a couple of laps, because then Seaton's thing really seems... Oh, oh look at that up the inside. Oh, oh, boy, there was a lot of room there. That was a good, good move on Lowndes' behalf. Uh, the, especially when you think there was all grass and mud across the inside of the circuit. You have a look here. Yeah, there's a lot of dirt and garbage. Here we oh, go. All right, now let's see if I can see what DJ up the back. Oh, now oh. someone hit. Someone hit DJ oh. up the backside. And then uh, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> but how lucky was he? Look at those cars. They're coming through at well over 100 oh. kilometres an hour. And Johnson... Watch, 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 watch. Oh, oh. there you go. Yeah, now, there's at... no doubt about that. That was a little bit of a surprise, wasn't it? So DJ, tell you what, he's... Uh... Eyeballs just nearly fell out of their sockets there, there, there too. Go, Look who's there. directly behind him. See who it is. Cameron Mc... No, it's uh, Longhurst. Tony Longhurst. Tony Longhurst from the left there. Collided with Dick Johnson. McLean did a brilliant job to avoid contact there. Well, that was a graphic indication of the impact there. You oh, see Dick Johnson. Poor, poor old JB nearly got involved in it as well. Yeah. See Dick Johnson's face when he got yeah. hit there. It gave him a major shock. Tony Longhurst, Tony Longhurst. went in for a wheel change apparently from oh, that Radisic. impact. Look at this, right behind Brighton. And Crompton was in front of Paul Radisson. Oh! That's why I'd be interested to see if Russell can give him a bit of liberality yes. there. Dear idea. Boys are starting to throw the elbows out in heat three. Mark Scape is left sitting on the inside and whether he can get out of there is the question. Let's hope he can. Oh, he will be. Back on oh, now. Was close. Just misses Daniel Miller, but Mark Scape back out on the track after spinning there. Now here is the damage on Dick Johnson's shell. AUXR8. And it's not the way that Dick wanted to say... Goodbye to Western Australia. Let's put the traveller. Yeah, we really put the wind up. Look at this big run down the inside by Glenn Seaton and lapping Tony Longhurst after that early pit stop. Wheel damage apparently. So Seaton, after getting caught by Lowndes at turn one, look at the amount of space he's put on him. 1.4 seconds the last time around. Trying to find his way around the lapped Longhurst Falcon. Let's have a look at the Shell Helix replay. So it's Scaife getting tapped around from behind, yeah, you can see that. Yeah, definitely a tap there. Let's have a look here and see if uh, that can only have been Russell, I think, was right, right behind him. 
Oh, Russell might have been getting a, yeah, a bit of getting pressure from one of the winds. Yeah, one of the winds cars, yeah, it's impossible to say that. There was contact, but to who calls what to start with, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, you'd have uh. to say that it didn't look like the winds car was up um, Eagle's bottle, did it, really? I think that was a reaction after Scaife yeah. spun in front of, uh, in right. front of Russell Eagle. And Mark Scaife is back out and Adam, he had to do a tough in race two. Race three is the same. Just see what don't let this bloke get in front. Well, 2.4 seconds, he's opened up after three laps. Phenomenal speed from Seaton in that opening tour. But once he got past, look at how he's getting oh, look, the at the, look at the three boards behind that guy. It's a good showing by Ford Radis as he's got the inside on Bright. This is a good move. The 18 Shell Helix Ford, he's there. He's there. It's tight through turn one. Radisic won't give in and he's got the more preferred line. Bright drifts wide. So Radisic is now up into the top three. It is Lounge, Seat, and Radisic. Bright back to fourth and Russell Engel is up into fifth position. Now Neil Crompton seems to have dropped back to eighth. He was up in the top five. Look how quick Radisic is uh, pulling in uh, Glenn Seaton. tell you what, Tony Longhurst is a lap car here. And he's going into battle with Glenn Seaton at the moment. Seaton won't be appreciating. But the 38-year-old New Zealander, Paul Radisic, gee, he's been impressive in the short forward this weekend. Let's have a look at that replay. Uh, it's well, it was... well, you'd have to say that he got a tap from Russell by what we've seen there, but only Russell would know and only Mark would know. But uh, the look on Scafie's face, he's definitely got a tap to start. This yeah. will be interesting to see how this pans out with Longhurst, who is a lap down, yeah, sitting well, in front of Seaton with Radisic right on Seaton, and then you've got Russell Ingall coming up right on Jason Bright. This is good well, stuff. Basically, Tony should get out of the way. You know, he's not in, he's not in his being lapped, and uh, he shouldn't he shouldn't be in amongst him mixing it when you're being lapped. Having said that, they're not uh, they're not catching him on there, really. Well, we can't see his lap times on the monitor at the moment, so it's not clear whether he's holding them up or not. And uh, if he's not holding them up, well, when you look at it, it doesn't, look, it doesn't look like he is. Exactly. This will be interesting. Bright and Russell Ingle. Now, we saw in race two just how dynamic Russell was coming from 30th to 10th. Now he's all over the back of Jason Bright. But will his tyres hang in? They've been saying after about six laps, these Bridgestone control tyres have been going off. Look at the speed of Jason Bright's car. That definitely is not slow, that stuff by this guy's uh, rocket ship. Well, Russell Ingle's really on fire. He's also in his third motor. Looking out the back of Glenn Seaton's car, Paul Radisic, he's really coming down heavy on the factory fa factory XR8 Falcon as they swing through Cat Corner up toward the S's once again. There's a great battle building up behind them too. It's Lowndes. Four seconds in front of Seaton, Radisic, Bright, Ingle. Yes, Longhurst is not holding him up. No, he's actually... He's definitely not, there's no doubt. Talking with Paul Radisic just earlier, he uh, was very happy with his effort in race two. I spoke with Lee Geyer, his crew chief, and I said, what did, what did you change, Lee, between uh, well, qualifying the first race? And now I said, what didn't I change on the car? They've been putting some pretty dramatic changes into that, and obviously it's working. Radisic is going extremely well in third. Well, I think Jeff Gretsch is going to be on the wall path. The Mobile Holden Racing Team team manager just had word from the fence. He said Russell definitely served up scape, so it's going to be a bit of... Uh, Discussion going on after this race. That's the most polite way I can say it. But this battle continues. Seaton copying plenty of feet from Radisic in the Shell 18 Falcon, taking over with oh, John Bow left off. And look at how aggressively. Ingalls passed. Uh, yes, got him. Look. So Russell Ingall continues his climb forward. He is up into the top four. And on his way forward, right now back to fifth. Richard sixth, fourth, Matt seventh, dropped at eighth. Cameron McLean, top privateer, still in ninth. And Paul Romano in tenth. Look at the look on Russell's face. He's, he's definitely got a little look in the mirror there, see what's going on. There's, there's quite a lot of room on um, Jason. He's really pumped up for a big result because his uh, season has not got off to anything like the start he had in 98. And he really has had some problems here with engines over the weekend. You can, yeah, see, you that. can see the mark on the front of, uh, you see on the right-hand side, or the left-hand side of the guy, right side of the screen, you see the little black telltale mark. Plenty of action so far this year. The officials have been very busy from Eastern Creek, Adelaide, and now there'll be more discussions about this round with perhaps uh, future penalties. There's Stephen Richards in the Wins Commodore. A good drive by Stephen so far this weekend, considering that team has had absolutely no testing. Each time they go to a race meeting, they're learning more and more about this brand-new VT Commodore. So Fred Gibson, 
very happy with the progress of his two young charges at the moment, although it's been a, a very uh, unsatisfying day for Greg Murphy. You've got to add it to McLean and Romano, the ninth and tenth, and look at their lapping, you know, as quick as any of the guys up the front. Yeah, 59. 0-4 for Lounza, 59-3 for Cameron McLean. It's a very it's quick time. Going, isn't it? Yeah, he really is a very quick driver. He's just sitting in that top ten. He said he was going to be expected to be in the top ten this year, and he's done it straight away. An interesting combination just outside of the top ten. Garth Tander and Larry Perkins are 11 and 12. After they're coming together in race two, Larry wasn't very happy. Here is the order as Lowndes flashes through. Tony Longhurst is, of course, a lap down. Seaton is second as Radisic tries to force his way through on the inside, but Seaton wasn't about to let him through. Ingle, Bright, Richards and John Faulkner in the better electrical car doing a great job. in the EL. Mark Dosky doing well in 12th position and Larkham trying as hard as he can. You're watching the third and final race and round three of the 99 Shell Championship Series. Positions remain as is, although Russell Ingle is making ground on Radisic. Here's a challenge on the inside and Faulkner's got bright, so he's having some problems. As we have a look back, there's McLean. Garth Tander has worked his way through on Romano. Mark Noski, Larry Perkins, Mark Larkham and uh, Greg Murphy and John Bow. Those two guys there have done a tremendous job from the rear of grid to work their way forward into 14th and 15th position at the moment. That's a great effort. Craig Lowndes last time around a 59-1-0. 4.7 seconds the gap back to Glenn Seaton. That tremendous battle for second between Seaton and Radisic. That rejuvenated number 18 Shell Falcon. Ingle behind that battle too. Richards, Brighton, Walker. Saw a move there. And here he is. Shot of the wind's Commodore at the back of Mark Larkham's right at 10 4 And look at uh, John Bow now. Making a real challenge up the inside. Yeah, Murphy running and running a bit deep there. He saw him running out a bit wide. Battle for 15th he position. Got to. And the Cat Falcon looking strong under brakes. Murphy gives him racing room, so John Bauer moves up to 14th. Greg's trying to hard force <laughs> the issue on the inside, and he's got there. Greg Murphy and the wings Commodore on the inside of the Caterpillar Ford. Greg Murphy, some forceful driving there. Not willing to uh, relinquish that position. He wasn't very happy. After yesterday, he had an altercation with John Bow down the back part of the circuit in the basin at Cold Corner. We saw him park the car and was buried in the sand. So that battle will be an interesting one to watch. Last time around, look at the bonnet on Mark Larkham's minor 10 car was lifting up. Might have been a little bit of trouble there. Look at that, he's fighting the wheel as he comes over the top of Barber Galloway Corner and dives hard down into cold turn. Greg Murphy locked in behind him. This battle, this just shows the quality of this field, this battle. Yeah. From 14th position, there you can see the damage on the front of the car. Well, from qualifying where we had from 1st to 18th, separated by just 9 tenths of a second as we watch Mark Larkham at work. Jason Barguano was saying before, I can't handle this. He said it's so hard to comprehend. As Bow looked for an inside run, he said, I'm used to racing in Formula 4s and Formula Holdens and being in the top two or three. And he said, this business about... Oh, look at that! outside of the top 10 is hard to cop. That was a great shot there. You could just see Bauer putting a bit more pressure on Murphy to put a little dent in the back of his bumper. Let him know he's there. Oh, John Bauer really pumped up in front of his new home crowd. Bauer, of course, driving for the new Caterpillar team. Let's hope it doesn't happen. It doesn't end the way it did yesterday because I don't think Greg was too pleased about it. So they're coming together yesterday. Heart rate monitor on Mark Larkham. Peak about 220, so you can see he's working pretty hard in the car. We've seen rates around 150, 160, so it's pretty high. Yeah, especially in that part of the set. Track there very fast, and they come down hard on the brakes into Nova's corner. A little bit of a steep rise as you come into that right-hander. 
and then drive down hard the main straight. Larkham is chasing Larry Perkins. We're talking about 13th and 14th position there. As we go back up top, Crompton and Faulkner. This is the battle for 6th and 7th. Faulkner holding on to 6th. Crompton, Ford Pickford Racing driver. A big change in terms of Ford Motorsport as well. The previous Motorsport manager, Greg Harbert, moving aside but still remaining with Ford. And a new general manager for Ford Motorsport, Howard Marsden, makes a return to, we could say, motor racing. Of course, the man very well known for his efforts with Ford in the early 70s and the Nissan program, both here in Australia and in Europe. He's back. The battle on the front with Seaton and Radish is still going on there. It's still, still um, really very, very close together. John Faulkner in sixth, Crompton trying to take sixth position for the better electrical Commodore driver. Faulkner's been in good form this weekend. Plenty of speed out of the car. If you have a look at the top 16, 18, you see the names in there. It's so competitive now, and it's quite incredible. Yep, Scaper's worked his way back to 19th position, so he's inside the top 20, which is a, a fair effort. Here's Stephen Richards in the wins. Commodore, his teammate doing it a little tougher, further back in 15th, Greg Murphy. Your race leader, and he looks like keeping a perfect score. Well, you can quite safely say, so long as nothing underwater happens, Lowndes will absolutely breeze this in. And don't forget, you can regularly check up on what's happening in the world of V8s by jumping on the net, www.v8supercar.com.au. That is the official V8 Supercar website. Four laps remaining for our race leader, Lowndes. And there's the order. Seaton still defending from Paul Radisic. Russell Engel in fourth position. And Stevie Rich, it's car seven. First, the wins Commodores. Fourth, Matt Crompton. Bright back there in eighth, and McLean doing a great job hanging on to the back of the top ten. Well, Mark, you speak of a great job. That guy on camera there, Paul Romano, that team have battled for a long time this year. They finally got sponsorship through Siemens Mobiles, which was great, and uh, they changed everything oh. on the car overnight. And now young Paul is showing that he can hold it together for race distance. He had a bit of a shocker in Adelaide at the 500. But he's had a, yeah, a but really rewarding weekend this time round. And that hit that shocker in Adelaide was due to virtually total brake failure, so we couldn't uh, couldn't uh, really blame him for that. Martinowski tucked in behind him in the Holden Young Lions entry in 12th position, so the young guys doing well. Yeah, Paul has been battling with a lot of unreliability on that car, a lot of very old components on it that had a lot of equipment failures and breakages. But when he came onto the scene a few years ago, he was very, very quick straight out of the box. He's obviously a pretty fast driver and you've got to have oh, the whole package that's... together look at him run down the inside of Garth Tander Tander knows he's got the speed he's got the straight line speed to duck up the inside and all the while Mark Noski is just searching and sniffing around in the background trying to get through you got the three older model Commodores there 22 year old Garth Tander bunch of young guys there 24 year old Paul Romano and 24 year old Mark Noski yeah, Jason Bright must be having some problem because he's, uh, he's lapping a lot slower and he's down in eighth place now. Marguana has recovered after that first corner incident. He's up in the 18th position just ahead of Mark Scaife and, and behind Steve Reed. Bauer is still 16, Murphy still 15, Larkham 14 and Larry Perkins 13. Well, it just shows the topsy-turvy nature of V8 Supercar in 99. Garth Tander absolutely on fire at Eastern Creek, very fast around the streets of Adelaide, now finds himself struggling at the back of the top ten. It's just incredible. Look at Mark Noski down the inside. Paul Romano has no answer for the speed of the Holden Young Lions Commodore. Oh, look at that! Yeah, Crompton and Faulkner. Oh. Well, oh well. what happened there? Crompton tried for the inside line, it looked like, and uh, well, there's the end result. John Faulkner and Neil Crompton absolutely beached. Well... Yes. And going nowhere. Big brake lock up there turning in. He's our race leader though. No one's been able to touch this man. 3.9 seconds. He's just holding that buffer. About four, four and a half seconds over his pursuers. And once he got in front after that first lap, no one's been able to touch right, him. Let's have a look, a look at that. Here. Oh, Neil goes for the inside. No, it just locks her up on the rear end. And, uh, just went in too deep. Yeah, it was he just went in, you know, with his eyes hanging out with springs basically. <laughs> Locked her up and there's nothing he could do, you know, he hit Faulkner and I guess. Once, you, once you're all locked up in your commission, you think, oh, no, he's not going to be pleased. One lap to go. There you go. The guys are talking. The There's thing. no problem. Well, they know it's not the sort of thing. Yeah. Mark Scaife. He 
won't be uh, overly pleased with what happened, but he has put in a good drive to work his way back up to 19th. It's not the kind of points that he would be hoping for to come away from Perth, seeing how coming into this round he was outside of the top 10 in something like 12th position. It was a tough day's work at the Sensational Adelaide 500 for him. Meanwhile, it's been totally the opposite for his teammate Craig Lowndes, has been cruising all weekend. Picked up his sixth career pole position and keeps his record intact. He has never been beaten in nine starts here in Western Australia. Craig Lowndes, the series leader, crosses it up onto the main straight and takes out all three races here at Barbagello. Glenn Seaton, a determined drive. He holds off Paul Radisic for a well-earned third position. That's Radisic's first podium Good drive in from 1999 and Russell Ingle who worked his way up there into fourth. And Stephen Richards in the wins Commodore. Look at this skirmish in the background. Romano got McLean. Oh, look at this. And Mark Noski coming in just behind there. So that was a great battle for the minor placings. And Greg Murphy managed to hold out John Bow for 13th. Bow finishing back in 14th. But there's the man of the moment. Again, Craig Lowndes. And... Well, if you were the other Holden teams or the four teams, this... Uh, did, you got to hand it to them. I mean, they they just are doing a brilliant job. And you don't, you can't, you're not lucky to win all these races. You're good. Well, a better showing from the four teams today, that's for sure. Mark Larkham finishing the day in 10th position as we have a look at the final placings on your Shell Helix race score. Lounge Seaton, Radisich, Ingle, Richards, Jason Bright, who dropped back to 6th. He'll be a little bit disappointed with that. Tanda fought his way forward to 7th and Romano 8th. That's a good result. McLean, uh, top privateer. Noski, Perkins, Larkin, Murphy and Bow. Steve Reed in 15th and Barguana 16th. Scape there in 17th ahead of Nathan Pretty. We go back to Tony Longhurst in 21st position. Back to wrap it up after this. Well, welcome back to Barbagallo Raceway in Western Australia. A huge crowd turning out today to watch the V8 supercars in action, but the Holden Racing Team continuing their domination. The fourth win from four V8 starts here. But the Fords, I can tell you, are coming back pretty strongly. In third place today, it was a great drive by Jason Bride. points going don't you congratulations Jason Bright in third place and as I said the Fords are coming on strong and none stronger than this man Glenn Seaton in the factory Falcon ah oh, they love that sound out there the return of the Ford works team it's one thing to have a nice name like that but you've got to put the results on the track and that car just seems to be getting faster and faster all the time you do, Mark, and uh, really it's just a matter of uh, doing a bit more development and hopefully we can catch the Holdens. But at, at this stage, I'm very happy with the weekend to come out second and uh, to be up there in the championship is very important because it's a long year and hopefully we can pull together. But uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Philip Allen. It's uh, my own home te test track years ago or last year. So, uh, Rick, I think we should go pretty well there. And also Neil will have his AU there, so that should be great. But, boy, how fast are those mobile Commodores? What are you going to do to close the gap? Well, uh, probably get rid of them in the first corner would be the best thing, but no. They're, <laughs> they're, uh, they're doing a sensational job. They are the team at the moment, and uh, really we've just got to work harder as the other teams to, to catch them. And uh, sure, there are lots of things change in motorsport, so uh, we don't give up till the end. Well, that's the spirit. Ford coming back in 1999. But the accolades belong to this man. I'd like to call on Ross Brody, the motorsport manager for Shell, to make the presentation to Craig Lowndes, our big winner today. I'll tell you what, Craig, right at the moment, the scorecard for 1999 reads HRT 12, everyone else nil. You blokes have been totally dominant. How can they stop you? 
Uh, hopefully, I guess uh, they won't. But uh, really, our guys have done a lot of work, thanks to Mobile, Bridgetone and Holden. Obviously, uh, we've done our pre-season testing and it's showing up now. Can you continue this form at Phillip Island? Well, we hope so. Obviously, we want to go down and do some more testing uh, and uh, really hopefully uh, continue on our winning way. But uh, obviously, as you said, the forwards are getting faster and uh, hopefully we can continue at the pace we've got. Congratulations, Craig Lowndes, winner, absolutely dominant at Barbagallo Raceway this afternoon. This championship's looking very strong for Holden Racing Team. The kid just doesn't want to let go of that series lead. He's heading for his, or he's well on the way to his third championship from three seasons started. Seaton moves from fourth up into second and Bright from fifth up into third. Unfortunate for Greg Murphy, he was a loser today, dropping from second back to fifth. Richards, Noski hangs in there. Perkins, McLean and Mark Scape bobs up into the top ten after starting today's round in twelfth position. I'm, so, I'm sure that Scape wants to be a lot higher.